Hi, my name's Drew and I'm going to be walking you through the outdoor RV today. Uh, starting up front here with the tongue jack. Uh, we do have up or down operation on the jack that is pretty standard. Uh, also having a light uh, gives you a point of reference if you are backing up to it in the dark. Uh, it is going to be a manual drive option on the top here. Uh, you will use uh, this included crank handle uh, in the event that you were to have any kind of power loss situations. You could then, uh, of course, muscle this up or down if need be. Uh, directly behind that, we do have two 40 pound propane tanks. Uh, open and close valve on the top. Uh, I find most people are somewhat familiar with these. Um, to exchange tanks, you're going to loosen this oversized wing nut, rotate this T-bar out of the way, and then that will allow you to remove these for filling purposes. Uh, in between the two tanks, we do have a uh, regulator uh, with a switch over here. So as long as this arrow is pointed towards the tank and that valve is open, you're going to be drawing from that tank. If we switch this regulator up there into the middle position, and had both of these valves open, we would be drawing off of both tanks there. Uh, directly behind those tanks, we do have two Group 24 deep cycle batteries. Uh, fair amount of maintenance that goes along with those. Uh, two or three times a year, we're gonna pull these vent panels. We're gonna be refilling with distilled water as necessary. So there is a clear marked water line in there. Uh, we do just wanna maintain that water level. Uh, coming around here to the side, uh, you're going to find stabilizer jacks on all four corners of the unit. Uh, these are for stabilization, they are not for leveling. Uh, we're going to want to come down, make contact with the pavement, maybe a quarter turn more. Crank handle here for the stabilizer jack fits there on the stud. Uh, it's a good idea to kind of use a light touch when handling these. Uh, you don't really have to bear down on them in either direction. They're not going to work themselves loose or anything like that. Uh, as they age, you'll do better using a light touch. Uh, if we are going to be doing any leveling of the camper, we're going to level front to back with the main tongue jack. Left to right, we'll use the tires and your choice of a leveling kit. Uh, coming down here to the side, we have a sewage hose storage here. Oh, excuse me. That's going to be your uh, dump valve. Uh, handles for dump valve is going to be here. Uh, we have black for black water, gray for gray water. Uh, black water is going to be anything that comes from the toilet, uh, any solid body waste. Gray water is going to be anything that comes from the sink or the shower. Uh, down here, back to the actual dump, we have your uh, standard bayonet style fitting here. And your sewage hose is going to connect the very same way that cap comes off. So you will take your sewage hose, line it up in that halfway position, uh, give it a quarter turn to the right, that's going to lock it on. Uh, again, that motion is going to be something like that. Uh, just a refresher on that black water tank. That black water valve is going to be closed in the closed position 90% uh, of its life. Uh, you only want to dump as necessary. So you're going to use the onboard monitor panel uh, to monitor those levels and dump as necessary. Uh, that gray and that black water valve should never be opened at the same time. Uh, and it is a popular option to go ahead and dump your black water and rinse with the gray water. Uh, coming up top here, uh, we do have your potable water fill. Uh, this is what you're going to be using if you're doing any off-grid camping. Uh, hopefully before you get to your destination, you do have some access to running water. You're going to stick a garden hose directly in there, fill up to it overflows. Uh, of course, once it is overflowed, uh, you're going to use that wa onboard water pump to pressurize that system and draw it up to the fixtures. Light here, uh, switch, switches right there underneath the fixture. Um, nothing too crazy, just a, a nice location to go ahead and light this area if you are doing any uh, dumping after dark. Uh, this is your city water connection. Uh, this is what you're going to be using if you're staying in an RV park. You do have access to full-time running water. You're going to go ahead and use this connection here. Uh, biggest thing with this is water pressure is very, very important. Uh, we want to reduce that water pressure or regulate that water pressure 
uh, anywhere in between 40 and 75 PSI. Uh, this is the water pressure regulator that we do include for you today. Uh, this specific regulator is going to keep the water pressure in, below, in between 40 and 50 PSI. Uh, if you would like to, uh, if you would like more pressure, you could uh, feel free to, to use either an adjustable pressure regulator uh, or a high flow pressure regulator, uh, but we do not want to exceed 75 PSI in terms of water pressure. Uh, so this, any water pressure is going to hook directly onto the water source or spigot. Uh, your hose would then connect or screw onto that. And then this trailer bound connection would be rotated here onto your uh, drinking water hose there. Uh, down below that, and very important that you wouldn't confuse the two, uh, we have your black tank flush, which is going to be this guy down here. Uh, that corresponds with a jet inside the black water tank, specifically designed to help blast off compounded toilet waste, body waste, uh, things like that. Uh, the biggest limitation to that black tank flush uh, is there is no check valve or um, you know, anything to keep that waste water in the tank uh, when you are filling with that, with that tank flush. Uh, I recommend my customers to, to have five minutes with water rushing in here before relieving the pressure there on the Blackwater uh, Bladex valve itself. Uh, if you have a friend, uh, even better than that would be have them watching the monitor panel on the inside, watching that level of water grow, uh, and then again relieving the pressure down there on the valve itself. Uh, spray port here, uh, this is what they call a quick connect spray port. Uh, on the inside you're going to find a blue coiled hose uh, with a sprayer, uh, you would slide this locking collar back, insert the male end fully. Uh, once it is fully inserted, it will lock back uh, and, of course, automatically pressurize. Now, this spray port is only controlled by this water pump here. Um, what they do at Outdoor RV uh, is they give you the option of when you are off-grid, you have this secondary water pump, uh, which is a, a high-flow water pump. Uh, maxing out at 60 PSI. Uh, they do that so when you are there again off grid you have the ability to wash off uh, any outdoor equipment that you have or, or anything again that would need to be sprayed off uh, that you may need a slightly higher pressure than what would you would standard standard that you would standard find on one of these units. Uh, switch for that water pump is going to be this right here uh, as you can see it will pressurize uh, automatically. Uh, once it does reach that pressure, it will kick off. So. Uh, lug nuts, tire pressure uh, is gonna be what we're gonna be talking about next. Uh, these tire pressures run a max pressure of 80 PSI. Uh, that is the max tire pressure rate stamped on the sidewall of the tire, uh, as well as the uh, data tag here uh, and axle rating of the camper. Uh, we encourage you to maintain again that 80 PSI. That's going to give you the highest flexibility in terms of weight rating. Whether you are completely full or completely empty, that 60 PSI, or excuse me, that 80 PSI uh, is a good number. Uh, lug nut torque is also something very important to consider. Uh, these lug nuts have been torqued to a hundred foot pounds here in our shop. Every manufacturer recommends a retorque procedure. Uh, which is going to include the first 15, 25, 50, and 100 miles of initial travel. Uh, the manufacturer wants you to maintain that 100 foot-pounds of, of torque. Uh, they further recommend that every time you move the camper or start a trip from there on after, you do retorque those down to 100 foot-pounds. So that is very important to maintain. Uh, above that, we have a couple inlets here. These are standard RG6 cable fittings. Uh, those are designed for either park cable services or aftermarket satellite package. Uh, they do pass through to the designated TV areas of the campers. These would just be the inlets of those services. Of course, the outlet is going to be at the TV. Uh, 30 amp, 110 volt power supply here. Uh, this is your cord, comes with the unit. It is 25 feet in length. Uh, will only be accommodated one way. Uh, as you can see, it only makes sense that it is going to plug in one way. 
Uh, once you do insert it fully, you will give it an eighth inch turn to the right that locks it in. Then we do have this secondary collar here to screw down, lock it in further. Back of your refrigerator panel is here. Uh, from a maintenance standpoint, just not too terribly much you're going to be doing with this. Uh, it's not what we would consider a customer serviceable unit. Uh, biggest thing you can do is going to be in protecting it from uh, mud daubers, flying insects, things like that. Uh, they do make specifically cut screens for every one of these appliances. Uh, and again, it's our recommendation as a dealership that you do uh, put those screens in place and, and keep those flying insects out. Uh, other than that, uh, maybe remove the, the vent cover here uh, a couple times a year, give it a visual inspection, uh, make sure nothing's gotten in, uh, make sure everything looks uh, as it should. Uh, dropping down here to the, the furnace, uh, again, it's, it's just not really much to speak of uh, from a maintenance standpoint uh, other than, than keeping these mud daubers and flying insects out. Uh, this is, of course, your exhaust. Uh, so it is very important to let it exhaust, uh, not something you would want to put a lawn chair uh, or really anything in front of it. Uh, it does blow very hot air when it is on, uh, will, will melt anything that you do put in front of it. Coming here to the back side, uh, not too terribly much to speak of. We have your tube bumper. Uh, feel free to use that to store your sewage hose in or any kind of long storage that you may need. Uh, it does have a removable cap on each side. Uh, we have tail lights, marker lights, uh, license plate bracket, of course. Uh, again, kind of the usual suspects. Uh, full size spare uh, is going to be a steel wheel spare, but it is a full size spare. Uh, and then we also have an auxiliary receiver here. Uh, and just like this sticker says, max capacity 250 pounds. That's helpful if you want to add a cargo rack, bike rack, uh, any of those kind of aftermarket accessories would pair well with that rear receiver. Uh, rooftop ladder access here. Uh, manufacturer does recommend that every 90 days uh, you not only inspect the rooftop seals, uh, but anywhere where two pieces come together, there will be some sort of sealant. Uh, and it is very important that we do uh, maintain those seals or at the very least inspect them once every 90 days. Uh, on the roof there, uh, you're going to use a standard RV lap sealant. Uh, you would source that from any RV supplier or dealer. Uh, and, and again, you're looking for any degradation in the seals, uh, any uh, cracking, drying out, any of those things, and, and you will spot seal as necessary. And then any place on the body uh, where two pieces come together, you're going to use a 100% silicone product um, and, and, you know, remove and reapply uh, as necessary. Uh, coming around here to the side, um, you have an RV handrail here, uh, pretty standard, uh, lifts up and then we'll um, lay flat against the camper. Uh, steps are going to be uh, fold the bottom step in and then you can fold the rest in. Uh, on the way out uh, they give you this nice handle you can pull and then lay those out. Uh, 10 gallon capacity water heater here. Uh, just gonna uh, start out by again reminding you of the importance of applying some some bug screening material uh, to the main cover here um, to keep any mud daubers, flying insects from nesting in the appliance. Uh, once we remove the door here, uh, manufacturer has two very specific recommendations with these water heaters. Uh, number one is going to be any time the unit is going to be in storage for more than seven days. Uh, we do want to make sure that we do drain this water heater, uh, keep things nice and fresh. Uh, and number two is going to be when starting your trip, uh, because it would be empty, uh, they do need you to prime the water heater before lighting it, which just means pumping 10 gallons of water into it uh, before lighting it. So we'll start off with the draining procedure. Uh, of course, most importantly, we want to give it ample time to cool down, uh, generally a lot longer than you may think. They are very well insulated, so we recommend about eight hours. 
Uh, once you are fairly confident that that water is cold, uh, we do need to, very, very important, uh, we need to depressurize the unit itself. Uh, easiest way to do that is going to be uh, using any interior uh, fixture uh, and turning the hot side of that fixture on. Of course, cutting the flow of water to the unit first. Then we're going to turn that hot side of the spigot on. Uh, that's going to go ahead and depressurize this water heater. Uh, once that flow uh, becomes non-existent there at the fixture, uh, that is your indicator that this has been depressurized. You're going to come down here to your drain plug uh, and use an inch and an eighth socket and extension to go ahead and back that drain plug out. The remaining water left in the tank is then going to, to flow out from there. Uh, now this drain plug pulls double duty. It's of course not only your drain plug, but it is an anode rod as well. Uh, anode rod is, is generally a, a three quarter inch by 12 inch piece of magnesium. Uh, acts like a magnet for hard water deposits, calcification, things like that. They deposit onto the anode rod and eat away at that as opposed to the inside of your water heater. Uh, generally, you can get a season or two of camping uh, out of an anode rod, of course, dependent on use. Uh, you should be well aware of, of the condition of your anode rod because you'll be looking at it every time uh, you do drain the water heater. And when it does come to replacing it, you're going to replace your drain plug and anode rod as one full assembly. Uh, on the flip side of that conversation, uh, when starting out your trip, uh, because of course this would be empty, uh, it is very important that we prime the water heater again uh, and feed 10 gallons to it. Uh, very easy to do so. Uh, you are just going to introduce a flow of water to the unit, whether that be from the fresh water tank or the city water connection. Uh, and then again, turn the hot side of the spigot on. That flow initially is going to be very uh, bubbly, spitty, airy, uh, very interrupted. Uh, what's happening is, is by the time you're seeing the water at the fixture, it's running through the water heater first. So when that flow normalizes at the fixture, uh, that is a very good indicator as well that you have 10 gallons of water in here you can go ahead and choose your source on the inside, uh, whether that be uh, the 110 volt electric heating element or the, the propane gas with 12 volt ignition. So, uh, moving on, uh, we have a couple 110 volt all weather outlets here. Um, nothing, again, too out of the realm. Uh, speakers, lights, uh, awning controls, things like that, we're gonna get to on the inside. Uh, Kind of a fair amount going on into the front compartment here. Uh, of course, you not only have this pull-out cargo door, uh, which is a nice feature, uh, does have this locking tab to keep everything secure and keep your gear from, from smacking into the door there. Uh, you have some holders here uh, for some, some other gear as well. Uh, and then this guy is where you're gonna find your crank handles uh, for the stabilizer jacks as well as the tongue jack up front. Uh, on this forward facing wall here, um, this switch here that you initially see is going to light up the battery compartment on the front of the camper, uh, right where you have your batteries. Of course, if you were again doing any uh, maintaining after dark or, or anything that you needed to light that space, uh, that is an option there for you. Uh, and then below that, we have your battery disconnect switch. Again, very important to utilize that, uh, especially when you are storing the unit. Uh, for periods of long-term storage, we do want to go ahead and, and isolate those batteries from the system. That's going to keep them in the best condition. Uh, and to do that, it is just the matter of a flip of a switch. So nothing too out of the realm there. Uh, and then lastly, we have a... Uh, solar plug here, uh, that is a tr traditional style solar plug, uh, again designed for a, a portable solar panel. Uh, this would be used in conjunction with rooftop uh, solar, but this would be more of a, a, a portable option, kind of a smaller option, generally one that you can throw uh, in a storage compartment and, and take along with you. So this is a, a direct connection to the battery. Um, all of those portable panels are essentially plug and play with a built-in charge controller right there on the panel. So you have to do nothing more than plug in your solar panel here, position it in the sun, 
Uh, from there on after, it's essentially going to do everything uh, on its own. And that, that is about it here on the outside. Oh, we got your, uh, we do have your toy lock here. Uh, this is utilized, a, this is a, a ratcheting uh, cable lock. Uh, and again, is designed to lock up any outdoor equipment that you may have outside, uh, keep that secure. Um, and it does, we do have quite a bit of length there on that cable. So. Um, other than that, that's basically it here on the outside. We're going to hop on the inside and show you everything uh, there is to know in there. So right here inside the door, we're going to focus here on the dinette area. Uh, of course, it goes without saying you have this big, beautiful window here. Uh, and all of these windows are going to have these pull down projector shades. Uh, they work very well. Uh, and then, you know, operation of these windows is, is going to be uh, more or less like you would expect to find in a, a residential window uh, with the locking mechanism there and the sliding function. Uh, you do have the option of making this dinette uh, into a, a secondary sleeping area. Uh, very traditional pedestal style uh, dinette here. Uh, tabletop would be wiggled there uh, and freed from this uh, pull here and then of course you would do the same to free the pull from the flange there uh, From there you're going to take this tabletop. You're going to lay it uh, right on these uh, slats here uh, From there you're going to take uh, one of these rear cushions and use that to fill out the sleeping area so. um, Also uh, we have your TV area here uh, on the roof, we're going to find a omnidirectional digital over-the-air television antenna, which is a very nice feature. Uh, to turn that on, we do need to make sure that that button is depressed and you do see that green light. That digital antenna is going to automatically search out the best signal. So if that green light is on, uh, all you have to do from there is go ahead and do a channel search uh, and it will bring in your best available options. Uh, also, you do have a pull chain here, a uh, very good idea to lock the TV down uh, when going down the road so it doesn't um, wiggle its way out or anything like that, uh, and that would be the release for that mechanism. Uh, and then, of course, when you are going down the road, the TV should be locked in, something like that. Um, down below here, we have your... Uh, CD, DVD, AM, FM, radio, Bluetooth uh, setup here. Uh, we do have multiple zones in the unit. Uh, one, zone one is going to be the inside speakers. Uh, zone two is going to be the outside speakers. Uh, the volume is controlled separately on each zone. Um, Bluetooth option is going to be here. Further modes would be accessed with this button. Of course, you have auxiliary inlet, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, USB inlet. Uh, this unit in particular does have its own service manual. So if you have any further questions with that, uh, either consult that manual or feel free to give us a call. Uh, coming over here to the refrigerator. Uh, refrigerator will be off uh, when you come to it. It's going to be a hard to press there uh, on that on off button uh, that will kind of boot up. Uh, and, and display the last saved uh, settings. Uh, this in particular was on propane gas. Um, and to cycle through those modes, you would hold this mode button. So that shows the propane gas. That's denoted by that, that little droplet there. If we hold that again, that's gonna kick us into this auto mode. Uh, the A with the plug just means we're on AC auto. Uh, what that means, if I, if I were to run outside and unplug the unit from shore power, it's going to automatically start lighting on gas. Uh, only other mode that we have there uh, is going to be uh, AC without that automatic switchover. So if I, again, were to run out there and interrupt shore power, uh, it's just going to shut the unit down. So there is not going to be any secondary source there. Uh, handle for the fridge is going to be on the top of the door. Uh, handle for the freezer uh, is going to be on the uh, bottom. So, uh, coming back around here, right inside the door, uh, kind of quite a bit going on. 
Uh, first up here is going to be your awning uh, extend and retract switch here. Uh, this is not what we would consider a one touch awning. So if you stop or take your hand off the switch, the awning does stop. Uh, it's, it's a nice, uh, it's nice to have the ability to run the awning part way out. Uh, feel free to do that. Uh, light switches here. Uh, one is going to be what they call a courtesy light, just a switch you can hit when you are coming into the unit at dark uh, to light the space. The other here is going to be the awning lights uh, that are on the tube of the awning. So the switch there, um, and, and again, it's nice to have that option. Water pump uh, coming over to here, which would be considered your courtesy panel. Um, this is going to give you a real-time readout of not only where your tanks sit, uh, but give you the, the ability to turn on your water pump and your water heater on a couple different sources. Uh, starting up here with the convenience center, uh, you have two kind of displays here. Uh, one for the battery, which is going to indicate if the battery is low, fair, good, or charged. Uh, and then the next uh, indicator is going to be for your tanks. Uh, and then you just push the button corresponding with what you are trying to uh, check. Uh, and the more light you see, the more full uh, either that tank or the battery is going to sit. Uh, and it's important to note there on the battery uh, that it will always read full when you are plugged into shore power. To get a true readout of where your battery sits, you do need to unplug from shore power and then push that button uh, and get that, that kind of real-time readout. Uh, and then the switches here on that same panel, of course, uh, the first one's going to be the water pump switch. You know it's on if this little red light is on. Uh, and then you have your water heater switches here. Uh, you can feel free to, the one in the middle is going to be LP gas. The one on the right is going to be the electric 110 volt element. Feel free to run both at the same time. That's going to give you the highest recharge rate. You're looking at 17 gallons per hour utilizing both sources. Uh, next up in terms of efficiency is going to be propane gas uh, that comes in at about 15 gallons per hour and then uh, last is going to be the the electric heating element standalone is going to provide about 11 gallons per hour uh, of fresh water or fresh hot water. Um, coming here into the kitchen. Um, a lot of these lights are going to be uh, with the switch right there on the actual fixture. Nice large sink here. Uh, fixture does operate or offer uh, multiple spray options as well as having the ability to pull that out. Uh, this blue hose, of course, we covered that on the outside. This is going to be for that spray port uh, on the outside with that quick connect fitting there. Uh, Stove top here um, does have a sparker igniter to go ahead and light the, the burners uh, on the stove top. So you'll turn those each knob to light, uh, rotate that sparker uh, clockwise, uh, and it will ignite that burner. The oven is going to be lit in kind of a more traditional way. You will turn this knob to pilot uh, and you will have to hold that knob in while coming down here with a long stem barbecue lighter. Uh, and you are going to want to put your flame directly in between those two prongs there. Uh, and that will allow you uh, while holding this button to get a pilot lit. Uh, keep in mind that anytime um, you do turn this all the way to off, this knob all the way to off, that pilot light is going to uh, extinguish. Uh, standard run-of-the-mill microwave here. Um, same kind of variant you're going to find at home. Um, you know, nothing too much to be said about that. Uh, light, uh, fan, things like that are, are, again, pretty close to what you're going to see uh, in the residential sector. So behind this access panel, underneath the uh, oven here, uh, which is just held on with a couple strips of, of Velcro there, so you can go ahead and pull that. Uh, and it is labeled here um, 
on the thing that we're going to find your low point drains. Now your low point drains are very important uh, for just good general maintenance as well as winterization. Uh, what those will do is they're going to drain anything in between water source and fixture is going to be drained with those low point drains. Uh, so you will use those in conjunction with draw, uh, draining the water heater separately uh, to purge all of the water from the camper. Manufacturer recommends again that you do that if the unit is going to be in storage for more than seven days uh, or if you are doing any sort of winterization process. Uh, so back behind here, uh, on the left side of the water heater, you're going to find two valves transitioning through the floor. Uh, find those transitions through the floor, trace those up to the nearest valves, open those valves. That's how you're going to drain your low point drains. Uh, in kind of real world, the, the sequence should go, uh, of course, drain your freshwater tank if it's been in use. Uh, then you're going to come in here, you're going to open up those low point drains. Uh, drain that water um, there and then you're going to find the or you're going to follow the uh, draining procedure of the water heater that we covered there on the outside now if you do all three of those things um, that is going to evacuate all of the water from the camper uh, and again you're going to be doing that anytime the unit is being in storage or initially if you are doing a full winterization process now if you are doing a full winterization process you're going to go uh, there's going to be a few extra steps in the mix. Uh, so once that flow of water has been cut to the unit and we have drained all of the water from the system, you're going to come here into that same compartment and you're going to uh, utilize, the, utilize the water heater bypass because we don't want to, our next step is going to be introducing antifreeze into the system and we don't want to pump 10 gallons of antifreeze into the water heater. So you'll find two valves here. Uh, on the inlet and the outlet of the water heater and we do just need to uh, switch those valves there into the opposite position. So once we have bypassed the water heater, we're going to reach there uh, again into this compartment here and we are going to uh, find this white hose here. Uh, we're going to trace again this white hose back uh, till we find the, near, the, the nearest valve in line. Uh, we're going to open up that valve uh, we're going to remove this plug here on the line and we're going to take this and we're going to stick this directly into a gallon bottle of RV grade antifreeze. Now with all of that in place uh, and the water heater bypass, we're going to turn the water pump on. We're going to go from fixture to fixture inside and out of the unit and open up the hot side and the cold side of each fixture. Once we see pink at the fixture or antifreeze coming from the fixture itself, that is a very good indicator that you are winterized. Uh, from there, maybe let it, let it you know, fill up the P-traps on the way out. So once you see that pink, maybe a few seconds longer, uh, again, just to fill up the, the P-traps on the way out. And that's uh, pretty much it to winterizing. Of course, when the season restarts itself um, in the spring, you will want to be double sure that you flush all of that antifreeze from the lines uh, before using the unit initially. Uh, hopping here into the bathroom, um, we have of course a rooftop exhaust fan. Uh, controls for that fan are going to be here on the wall. Uh, is an electronic kind of remotely controlled fan. Um, we of course have fan on and off there that's going to automatically bring up that hood and then you can of course choose a fan speed from there uh, you do have four options in terms of fan speed uh, vent open vent close uh, very kind of basic controls but it is nice to not have to manually reach up and, and open that uh, down below that we have the bathroom light on off toggle switch uh, and then below that we have a secondary water pump switch uh, if you found yourself uh, in the restroom and the water pump was not on, uh, you could go ahead and turn it on from this location. It is a bit of a redundant switch. Uh, so if you turn it off here, it's going to be off everywhere else as well. Uh, main GFI outlet for the unit is also in the restroom. Um, all these receptacles in this unit are on the same circuit. That is going to be the reset point. Uh, if one of them gets overloaded, they all kind of follow suit. Uh, and again, just like in your bathroom at home, uh, you would be resetting there right there on the outlet. 
Uh, pedal flush toilet here. It's going to be a light press to fill up the bowl, uh, full press to flush. Um, not a bad idea to keep water in the toilet uh, during use. That's going to help keep those bad smells down in the tank. Uh, other than that, a lot of this stuff is, is pretty straightforward. Uh, again, you know, shower curtain here will fold out. And then when not in use, you can kind of keep it out of the way. Even with 10 gallons of hot water, uh, you will probably find yourself taking military or Navy style showers. Uh, so they have equipped a on off switch here on the uh, shower head. That way you can cut off the flow of water while still maintaining your mix here uh, at the fixture. Uh, right outside the door, we're also going to have a kind of a, a, hallway, a hallway switch, which is nice um, to turn those ceiling lights on and off. And then we have your uh, thermostat here for not only the furnace, but the air conditioner as well. Um, this is going to be your mode button. Um, so all the way to the left is going to be air conditioner. Uh, you have a sliding thermostat here. Uh, and then your fan speeds here. So uh, on the everything on the left of this switch uh, is going to be on the auto side of things. What that means is it's, it's going to reach your designated temperature here and then that fan is going to shut down. Uh, if we go ahead and run this here on the other side, that's kind of on all the time. Uh, that fan is going to run indefinitely whether or not it's reached your uh, temperature that you have set here on the thermostat. If we go one over from the left, uh, that's just standalone standalone fan. Uh, again, this this switch would still come in play there with that fan. Uh, next up is going to be off, so that would turn the whole system off. And then next up is going to be furnace. Uh, so again, if we slide this to there, that's going to kick that blower motor of the furnace on immediately. Uh, 16 seconds after that, it actually ignites. By that 30 second mark, it's producing heat. Uh, you know, other than the, the cabinetry here in the hallway, not too terribly much to speak of. Uh, we do have a carbon monoxide LP leak detector there down on the floor that is wired into the 12 volt section of the camper. Uh, no batteries to change. It will indicate to you uh, which gas it is sensing by a series of lights on the unit itself. It does have a test button. Uh, functions again very much like a smoke alarm. Uh, and it is, again, our opinion as a dealership to go ahead and test the function of that every time you take the unit out. Uh, here into the bedroom, we have uh, all the way towards the wall, we have uh, not only do we have uh, 110 volt outlets on each side of the bed, but we also have USBs, uh, which is nice uh, to have those, again, located on both sides of the bed. Uh, we have a safe up top here. Uh, that's nice for any valuables or firearms to keep those secure. Um, up top, of course, this light above your head is not going to be switched. It's going to be switched right there on the fixture. Uh, and then, again, coming up further, we have your solar charge controller. Uh, that is the, the kind of the brains to the roof-mounted solar. Uh, that is going to intake energy as necessary, cut off when it is not, um, when it is not necessary. And that kind of all happens behind the scenes. Uh, that will give you a real-time readout of kind of where your battery voltage sits, uh, how many you know, amp hours you're taking in, things like that. Uh, other than that, again, it is very visual. Um, there is there's not much control over it. Uh, we have uh, your max fan uh, up top there. Uh, that is going to be controlled with this remote here. Uh, that would be this button to go ahead and turn it on, the top left-hand button. Uh, from there, uh, we have up or down arrows that's going to control your fan speed. And then if we wanted to uh, go ahead and set a thermostat as well, we could go ahead and use the left or right buttons. If we want to change the direction of the fan, we can do so with that bottom right-hand button that's going to either bring air in or exhaust it, whichever you choose. Uh, and then say we wanted to 
uh, run the, the fan uh, with the hood closed to circulate air here on the outside, that would be this button here. And we can do that. Uh, kind of turns it into a ceiling fan. Uh, and then again, to shut the whole unit off, uh, we're going to go ahead and push that button there. Uh, storage underneath the bed. Uh, you do have some storage there on the underside, uh, which again is a very efficient use of space and a nice feature. Uh, up top here in the corner, we have a place for a secondary TV. Uh, they give you multiple power sources, whether it be a 110 volt TV or a 12 volt TV. Uh, and then we have your, uh, again, the outputs to your uh, RG6 cable fittings, which we saw the inputs there on the outside of the camper. This would be where they transition. Uh, we have a ceiling light uh, for, again, the, the rooftop lights, or excuse me, we have a switch for the rooftop lights. Uh, again, that one above your head is going to be switched right there on the fixture. We are going to come down here onto this corner and we are going to look at the fuse panel breaker box. Uh, when we open this door, uh, everything you see here on the right uh, is going to utilize a traditional light switch style breaker. Uh, these are going to be for 110 volt appliances. Uh, the ones here on the left are going to utilize automotive blade style fuses um, and that's going to be your 12 volt appliances. Not a bad idea to go to the auto parts store and uh, pick up a, a spare pack of fuses, uh, keep them with the camper. Uh, in terms of function, everything should be labeled here on the door. Uh, that just about covers the outdoor RV. Uh, thank you. If you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Uh, we can generally walk you through most of these uh, appliances over the phone uh, if need be. So thank you very much.